Unlucky. Sometimes it's a struggle to be alone with my thoughts. Sometimes everything is just too much. I try to study, and all of a sudden my brain starts wondering if this is worth my time and effort. I work out, and the empty space between sets is filled with this pounding, dreadful monotony. Same thing every day. I read a book, and one insightful passage leads me into a mental tangent of isolation, melancholy, and anhedonia. Even when I try to simply close my eyes and drift off into sleep, I feel that tangled knot in my stomach. The dizzying speed of my anxieties and doubts whiz through my mind, and I come to regret that coffee I had a little too close to dinner. And so I do what I always do. I spend a few desperate moments shifting through my sheets until I find my little black box, my pacifier, and I take the plunge. TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, my eyes are completely fixed and I bask in that blue blissful light. Finally, my brain goes quiet. It's a magical tool to be able to quell every fear and moment of discomfort by simply transporting yourself into the world of dance trends, outrage politics, and online shopping. It feels just real enough for you to care and to give your time to, but not enough to really cause any harm. Even when you scroll past an article describing the fact that Earth is past its tipping point and you read the 100 or so comments explaining why we will likely die out as a species before 2030, you're only ever really one or two taps away from total amnesia. Sure, that stuff is real, but it's just as real as this thread arguing over cancel culture and, oh, this one about the artistic decline of your favorite band. Uh, now that's more to your current appetite. And to know as your eyeballs are glued that all of these little mechanisms are watching you, predicting your next step and throwing out bait to see if you'll bite. As you continue scrolling and clicking, you encourage the formation of your very own algorithmic self, composed of your most basic wishes and desires. It forms a body without organs, filled with yearning and potentialities, avoiding systemic constraints. You may not consider yourself to be materialistic, but the algorithm knows just how long you lingered over those new shoes. Sure, you wouldn't consider yourself to be some sort of pervert who actively searches for girls in their underwear dancing. But active interest isn't the requirement here. Your algorithmic self is passive and forever yearning for the next flashy novelty to pop up on your screen. And your phone has all the receipts. Eventually, algorithmic technology will have primary influence over the composition of our desires. That is, if it hasn't already. We've given full permission for these things to monitor us at the weakest of moments, alone in bed, standing in line at the store, on the toilet. Like a funhouse mirror, it reflects the mental and emotional space of these desperate minutes and hours with subtle distortions, subtle enough for you to venture further and further until your sense of self has unknowingly shifted ever closer to the algorithm. It's a fair trade-off, right? A little bit of me for way too much of you. Except that you probably have way more of me than I could even begin to understand. The stupid questions that I googled, the Facebook messages that changed my life. My... my nudes? But even knowing what we know, does it change anything? We are feeble creatures, lonely, horny, and hungry for content. To be alone with ourselves is torture. To be aware and perceptive is to exist in a state of self-torment. Rather than inform ourselves of the crumbling reality we were born into, why not plunge further into one that is shaped just for us? Give it a few years and maybe that's the only reality that's left. Don't forget to absolutely obliterate that like button. If you like the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment on what you want to see next.